So during our last project together where we had to build a calculator, which was quite a few episodes ago, so it has been it has been a little while since we did that, I did see quite a few submissions where we had a few of them that did quite some amazing things using text. So I did mention at that time when I was reviewing the, the projects that we would work a little bit more with text once we got a little further into the course. And I think that's about time to do now. So as you can see in front of me here, I do have a basic example. We're just going to go through this one by one. Uh, I have written out the example, so I'm just going to sort of explain it as we go down. When it comes to text, we have a string class inside C sharp, which is something that we can use in order to manipulate text or strings that we have inside uh, whatever application we have in order to perform certain functions or methods on those strings. So if I were to take a string like the one I have here, which I decided to call some text. I have a string in here called Daniel is teaching about strings. Or I could actually say the string class if we had to be a little bit more exact there. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just show off a few of the different methods we have inside the string class inside C sharp that can do certain things to strings. And these are some of the more commonly used ones, which is why I picked these out. Uh, we do also have something called a string builder which is another class inside C-Sharp that we will talk about. I think I'll talk about in the next episode because it is quite a fun little thing to, to talk about. It's basically we can create strings using a string builder without having to create it inside something like, um, like what I did here. I created a string directly inside a string type variable. So we can actually build a string from nothing using a string builder. It's quite fun. We'll, we'll get to talk about it soon. But to sort of return to the string class and not the string builder class, you can see that I have quite a few examples here. I have a bunch of console write lines, which means that we're going to see some stuff inside a console. And what you'll notice here is that I basically took my string called some text and I went ahead and added a two lower method, which is part of the, the string class that we have inside C sharp. So I can use this two lower to convert all the characters inside my string to lowercase characters. I can also convert them to uppercase characters. Uh, so if I were to actually run this inside my console. I know you have sort of an issue watching my console because it's quite tiny. So I will try to enlarge it a little bit here in post-production so you can see it a little bit easier. Um, so as you can see here, we do have some different things inside the console. The top one here, I used the first uh, method for, which was to convert to lowercase. The second one I converted to uppercase. And then we also have something called uh, trim. Now trim is something that goes in and actually removes white spacing from a string. So if I were to get a submission from a user where they submitted a bunch of white space that we don't want to have inside a submission from a user, we can use trim in order to trim down the string so we just have the string itself, which is something that we use like I said, when we get submissions from a user. And you will actually see that if you were to take the example inside the console, you can see that nothing really happened to the string because you know I didn't have any unnecessary white space around it. So everything is fine. Uh, the next one we have here is something called index of, which is something that allow for us to check whether or not we have a certain, let's say, call it a substring inside our string. So if I were to say, well, does my string contain the word about, or I could just say A, you know, it doesn't really matter. I can search for sentences, words, letters, you know, characters. So I can say, well, does this string up here actually have about inside of it? And it does actually have it. So it will return the string position or at least the position of the first character, which is the A from about and tell me where it's positioned inside the string. So again, going back to the console, you can see that I get 19 because zero, one, two, three, and so on until you get to that uh, particular word there. We can also search for the last index of. So in this case here, I went ahead and said, well, I want to see where I is and we get something called 28, which means that I'm not going for the first I, I'm going for the last I, which is this one in here. Uh, so we, you know, we have a few different helpful functions here or methods they're called. We can also go in here and say that we want to grab a substring from uh, this specific string that I created. So what I can do is say using the substring method, I want to start a certain place inside my string, meaning from the second position. So if you go up here, zero, one, two, which is from the N. And I want to grab the next four characters. So in this case, yeah, I'm getting Neil, which was, you know, that part I was trying to grab, the last part of my name. So we can use that for that specific purpose. 
Uh, we can also replace things inside strings, which means that if I want to replace Daniel with John, I can use the replace method. Um, I do want to mention, I have all of these different methods you can use together with the text class inside, uh, or oh, sorry, not text class, the string class inside C Sharp. I have a link for it in the description. So if you wanna see all the methods, they're down there, okay? We do also have something called insert, which allow for us to insert words or letters or just in general a paragraph inside another string. So if I were to say, well, I also want to include my last name to the string here. So I'm gonna say, well, from the sixth position, I want to include Nielsen with a space behind it. So if I were to run this, you can see we get Daniel Nielsen is teaching about strings inside our console. Now the next two methods here are a little bit unique because we don't use them the exact same way. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm saying, well, I want to define that I have a string, which is the one I created at the top there called some text. And I want to say, I want to run a method called is null or empty. And then I want to run it on some text. And what I do here is I'm going in to check whether or not the string or the, what do you call it, the string variable I have up there is either null or empty. And this is something that's really helpful when a user submits something to us. If they decided not to fill in whatever field they had to type something into, then we can check whether or not there is, it is actually empty or if they type something into it. Uh, we also have the one called is null a white space, which does the exact same thing as the one above, except it also checks for white space, which is something that is quite useful to have. Then down here at the bottom, just to sort of do something to end off the episode here again, I just want to sort of point out that there is a bunch of methods and there's a bunch of properties you can go in and you can check out when it comes to this string object uh, or string class. Uh, so you can go and check that out in the, in the link in the description. But just one last thing is that we did talk about this as well in a previous episode, but I thought it might be fun to sort of do a, a refresh on it. If I were to have something like a string variable and I want to have a bunch of numbers inside of it, and I want to convert this into a actual integer. Now, the reason this is important is because when a user submits data to us, if we ask them to, let's say, submit their birth date, which in this case here, I'm born in 1991, then we're going to receive the data that the user submits as a string. It doesn't matter if they type in numbers only, we will get it as a string every single time. So we need to be able to take our string and convert it to an integer so we can use it as a integer inside our code. So in this case here, if I were to say, okay, I'm asking the user to type in his birth date or his birth year, then I'm going to get it as a string. So I have it inserted into this string number variable. And then what I can do is we have two methods we can use. Either we can say we want to parse it into an integer using this line of code here. And then we just send the reference to the string number up here, which is the data that the user submitted to us. And what this is going to do is that it's going to convert it to a number, which is why I can actually go in and say, I have to set it equal to an integer variable type. But if the user were to, let's say, put in some letters or something, something that is not numbers, then if it were to throw a error message, it is going to throw an exception if it's null or empty or something that can't get converted. Uh, whereas if I were to use the second method down here, which is where we use something called convert, and then we can convert to int32, which is an integer data type, then it is going to return zero if it's null or empty. So it's a little bit easier to work with if we get an error message there. Um, so that is probably the one that we will be using in the future. If it were, I mean, I might accidentally use this one, but this is probably the best one if you want to avoid as many errors as possible. Um, and then again, if you want to convert it back to a string, we just use the two string, which we've talked about so many times in previous episodes here. So we can do that as well by grabbing the int number again and just say we want to convert it back again to an int, uh, to a string. We can do that using the two string method here. So that's pretty much what I want to talk about in this episode. Um, not really a lot of new information, but more or less, you know, a link to where you can go look up these sort of methods because you will probably search for methods at some point. So it's good to just sort of take a look at the list and see what exactly can you do with strings. So with this in mind, I hope you learned something new. In the next episode, I think we'll talk about the, uh, the string builder, which is something that's quite fun to do. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed this episode and I'll see you in the next one.